In 21st century Singapore, where the average family has one or two children, meet the Hales. There's never a dull moment in this nine-person strong household. I got more sister than a friend. I'm the biggest family in my class. And the Lips, where chaos reigns with five children approaching their teens. I wish that they give me more privacy. Give me a proper space to study. And the Zionists, where two from each parent plus three young ones make seven children altogether. TV portrays step families as like bad families. Like I will have like an evil stepfather. What does it take to raise a big family? in tiny Singapore. A lot of them request, I want they are my own personal space. We all know finding a house with more than five rooms is kind of hard. Let me take this one. When I buy things, I always have to check the prices. Is it a good deal? So this one, $2 for everybody, right? OK, so we take this bread, OK? In this special four-part series, On the Red Dot explores the lives of these supersized families. It's Saturday evening in the Lim household, and Father Nick is preparing dinner. He only does this once every few weeks. Brian Nick, I'm coming for you. Faster. I don't eat this now. The staunch vegetarian is preparing a family favourite, braised chicken wings, for Nick's five children. Cooking this dish has become a ritual every time he returns from a business trip. When you come back, they are sure in back to waiting for me. This one, you still might have uh, some sort of culture there. At least you my first night, we are dinner with me first. <laughs> and after that, what you want to go, you go. <laughs> Nick is among 200,000 other Singaporeans who work overseas in Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam and China. He goes overseas almost every week and tries to come back over the weekends to see the kids. Recently, Nick's overseas workload has been increasing, and his children are growing impatient with his absence, especially 16-year-old Crystal. He missed out on most of my siblings' birthday, and they were very upset. I know that working is important, but then time is also very valuable. What you miss, you can't get it back. Sometimes, I wish that he would be more fatherly, like he would actually be there. To make up for lost time, whenever he is in Singapore, Nick would send all five of his children to school. It is the only way the father of five can spend some time with his kids. Okay. Which one they make your friends? He's uh, caring that, but he doesn't like to talk. So most of the, the time, I'm the one doing all the talking uh, with the kids. But he, he, he got his own ways to bound with the kids. Uh. But he showed him to care about fetching them, all this and that, yeah. She don't talk very long, uh. She talked to his friend right two hours. She talked to us like five minutes. Hello, yeah. Hmm, that's how it is. To them, I can talk. I can talk with the bank and the business people. I can talk very well. Hmm, that's possible. If you talk about the school things, I really have to pay for the teacher. Nick's inability to bond and express himself well to his children is a concern. However, his biggest worry is his eldest daughter, Crystal. 
I think Krista is uh, more headache uh, because he are going uh, older already. I think he more busy than my business. And their relationship has become increasingly awkward. Because I have a sensitive nose. Mm. No, uh, no, 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 it's sick. And my father is a very awkward person and I'm a very quiet person. So like, you put us both together, what kind of conversation can you even cover? <laughs> the Lims plan to move their family of seven out of their cramped apartment last year. But their plan was derailed when Nick had to travel overseas for more work. Nick is always not around to help. I'm the one doing all. So it's very, very tiring for me. So when the thought of moving house again, I will feel. <laughs> they promise us that we are moving for like months. And it's not like those promises were actually kept. I won't be surprised or excited. Until you get me to the actual house already, then maybe I'll get excited, yeah. Despite strained relations with his children and missed deadlines for a new family home, Nick still believes working overseas is worth it. For me, it's, uh, family is important, but income also very important. Over at the Hing household, siblings Ariel, Hannah and Raphael are fighting over their favourite toy. The Hengs have seven children. To save costs, the younger children must share their toys. Eight-year-old Raphael is the only boy of the lot. As the middle child, He's also always at loggerheads with his six sisters. Come here. Why are you crying? Ah, wait, wait, wait. After lunch, Ariel play. No, no, no. You don't cry and tell me what happened. You tell me properly. No, you Okay, never mind. Never mind. I quiet. Tomorrow you ride a skate scooter more. While it may be easy for David to discipline his kids, he finds it more difficult to comfort and connect with them. You don't see me pretty much for the last couple of years due to work schedule and stuff. When I'm home, usually I'm very tired, so I will be slouching on the sofa and taking a nap. Yeah, so it is naturally that they go to the mother. I, I do get jealous, you know, when I see them going close to the mummy and sharing with her things. I don't feel good. I, I felt I'm a lousy daddy.
For the last decade, David has worked in social services. He's a father figure to many vulnerable teenagers and has helped put their lives back on track. I see myself being important because I can give them the affection. I will love them as I love my own kids. But David's irregular working hours means he's rarely at home when the children are awake. And eldest daughter, 16-year-old Sam, feels the impact of a distant dad. I think me and my dad have like drifted apart compared to like 10 years ago when I was sick. Growing up, when he's not at home, he'll be working. After Hannah was born, he had to like work harder and stuff. Then at least, like, he started to not be at home as much. It's a green crayon. But recently, David's become more aware that he's putting his social work before his own family. I'm doing so much for these children, you know, but my own children don't even see me at home. I felt, or rather, in, in actual fact, I'm actually an absent daddy in, in many ways. Jesus loves me. But unknown to his family, David is planning a huge change to his life. Without telling anyone, he's abruptly quit his job as a social worker. I'll be tendering my resignation at the end of the month because I find that the shift for this work doesn't give me the time to be at home for the kids, to be with the kids. And then? Are you we'll be setting our own company to do the trial for three months first? That doesn't work, then I will apply for, for a regular job. But I have also got offers to do freelance job for somebody else. But I decided that to leave paid employment, to start my own so that I can have more control over my time. I worry about um, payment for the house and then the um, children education. I think it is um, rather a hard topic to talk to him. The only way to pick out the situation we're in now, one way is through business. Whatever decision that he makes at the end of the day, whether it is selfish or is it good for the entire family, I think time will tell. This is Zainal's second marriage. He's a dad to three young children, plus two teenage stepdaughters. Zainal also has two teenage sons from his first marriage. Zainal's wife, Siti Saleha, is the family's main breadwinner. She works as a senior patient associate at a local hospital. Hi, good morning, sir. Are you here for the blood taking or the seeing doctor? Um, taking blood and also seeing the doctor. On a normal day, I would work around like eight hours, nine hours. I will need to work on Saturday, Sunday as well, or even on public holidays. So on the normal days when I'm working, my husband is the one who actually helps to cook for the children. Actually, I don't care whatever people want to say about me being a house husband. Only I care is that what my wife thinks about me, that's one. Zainal used to work as a prison officer, but for the last two years, he's been a house husband. And his recent efforts have not gone unnoticed. Even though I'm not close to my stepdad, I really appreciate like all of the things that he has been doing at home. He's a really helpful person in a family. It's usually the husband who's working and then the mother who's like, you know, at home doing the house chores. But in this case, it's the opposite. And I really respect him from th for that. Lah. But not everything is rosy at home. The household income has been slashed by half since Zainal quit his job as a prison officer. The family now depends solely on Saleha's income. Saleha spends about $200 per month on marketing for the family. Sometimes that is not enough. Huh? Fish first, fish first. Like. We chose Gelang Serai Market because it's cheaper compared to the one at our neighbourhood. Like for example, you can get chicken 3 for 10, which you couldn't get at any of the supermarket here. 
and ten eggs. You can get that for a dollar. This one got ten, one fifty. Ah, what? One eighty for one packet, three packet five dollars. Ah, we were hoping that the marketing can stretch up to a month, but sometimes it does not because the kids sometimes eat more than what they should. You know, sometimes uh, we cook our favorite dish, so they want to have another round. With the family budget reaching breaking point, Zainal knows he must start looking for alternative work. Since father David quit his job as a social worker, wife Esther has become increasingly concerned about the stability of their family income. Even a trip to the supermarket is now fraught with dilemmas. Let's see whether do they have any offer like buy two. When I buy things from the supermarket, I always have to check the prices. You know whether it's an offer, is it a good deal? This one. If I buy one, it's six forty-five. For two, it's eleven forty-five. Because we, uh, we're such a big family, so we have been like living minimally. Rich. The family of nine used to have a budget of two thousand five hundred dollars per month for all their expenses, but with no income now, every cent counts. So, you want to take this one? Okay, you tell me how much this one costs. This one costs two dollar, right? So this one two dollar for who? For everybody, right? And the one only who eat. So, which one more worth it? This one, right? Conservatively speaking, every month we need about three. The groceries, my expenses, my wife's expenses, our phone bills. Um, the utilities, groceries and food for the family is one of our key hires. Since quitting his full-time job, David has taken up part-time work. It brings in $2,000 a month for the family income. But with monthly outgoings of $2,500, David faces some hard decisions. I will usually have only about or three meals a day, now I'll be eating one or two meals a day because I can go hungry, but definitely not my wife or my kids. David quit his job for more flexibility and he wants to set up his own teaching company. But not everything is going as planned. Currently, I have still zero sign-ups, but I've been talking to a few organisations, so hopefully by June holidays, I would have my first batch of maybe five to ten students per week. The worst that can happen is for me to go back to paid employment with a much lesser income. I'm hoping and I'm trying my very best not to let that happen. After months of house hunting, Nick has finally found a home for his family of seven. This three-storey terrace house is definitely an upgrade for the seven strong limbs. It's bigger, there's more space. Morning, I don't have to crowd. I don't have to wait for all of them. I can't wait to come see my house. One bit there, and then one bit there. I feel more relieved uh, to see the kids having their own space. Now I want to design the space. How are they going to do? My husband did a very good job finding this place. But thanks to him, we finally can move and he found a good location. At least do my effort, do our job, be a parent. So my children happy, I will feel happy. In the Zainal household, money has been tight since Dad Zainal left his job two years ago. Things that we have to let go of and slowly, like shopping, going for holidays, we need to let go bit by bit. 
the family needs another source of income. So Zainal's heading back to work. I just want to register. Oh, I need IC. The flexibility of the time. We can start off in the day, then we can rest at night. We can start off at night, we can rest in the day. So that makes, makes a better option for me. Zainal is working the graveyard shift, driving from 10 p.m. and ending at 6 a.m. I prefer to drive at night. In the day, I'm, I'll be very busy with, with my children and my wife to send them to school, to send my wife to work, to do the household chores. I make sure everything is settled uh, before I go out for my driving at night. Okay. <laughs> I don't get to sleep that much. A lot of things need to be done. So if I sleep, things around the house cannot move. I'm just doing my job as a father. I try to take care of them, try to give them whatever I can. Zainal strives to be a good dad. But for some family members, it's still a work in progress. His stepdaughters, Izati, were only six and Isa, four, when Zainal married their mom. We are in our teenage years now, so I guess it's a bit weird and awkward for us. So we're like more quite distant from him, from my stepdad. I try to bridge my relationship with my two stepdaughter so that I can be more close to them like their own father. But it makes me feel like whatever good I do to them, it doesn't have any, any effect on them because they will still look for their own father instead of me. So I consider myself as a shadow, shadow in their life, shadow of their own father. I want your phone. No more phone. Just give me a bottle. So hot, man. 